A Wednesday night at the racetrack. The fastest horse wins. But these horses are only allowed to trot. If they gallop, they're disqualified. We've always placed the blame on chance, bad luck. But a few years ago, Leif Andersson had another idea. He wanted to examine the horse's gene to see if maybe they determined whether or not a horse would gallop. If Leif could find the set of genes that made trotting horses gallop, it would be a breakthrough that would change harness racing forever. My grandparents, my father's parents, they had a small farm south of Stockholm. So I was visiting there quite a lot in, in summers and winters. So maybe they had five pigs and maybe 30 chickens, 10 cows and, and a horse. All of his life, Leif has been fascinated by the animals around us. He studied what part genetics plays in how animals function and discovered, for example, why certain hens laid eggs with yellower yolks than others, and how wild boars turned into today's livestock pigs. Leif is very happy to be living in what he calls the golden age of genetics. Due to the development the last 20, 30 years, we have got completely new tools to study the genome of different organisms. So you could compare it with when we invented the microscope, then you could look into the cells. Now we could look into the DNA using these technologies. So we could, today we could study basically any organism and its entire genome, every gene in an organism. And that is the reason why I call it the golden age of genetics. This question of the role that genes play in a horse's gallop, however, led to a much bigger question. In what way does a horse's genetic makeup determine how they move? To answer this question, Leif started his research a long way from the racetrack. He started here, with Icelandic horses. The reason why we were interested in Icelandic horses is that they have this special gates that they have. So they have something they call tölt, which is a smooth gate that is very popular in these horses. But only some of them, maybe half of them, can also pace, and they're called five-gated. And the fact that you have this variability within one population creates an opportunity for powerful genetic studies, and that was what we took advantage of, together with these new tools of genetics. If Leif could find the genes that enabled only half the Icelandic horses to pace, he would, in turn, find the genetic key as to why horses move in various different ways. Through use of DNA sequencing, Leif and his team examined and mapped the entire Icelandic horse genome. His team was successful with surprising results. One single mutation and a single change in one gene made all the difference. This discovery was made in a gene called DMRT3, which affected the horse's specific gaits. If the gene in the horse was mutated, they would pace, otherwise not. First, when we got this result, that we had a strong association to this specific gene, first you start to wonder, is there some error in your data that you get such an astonishing result. So we started to do confirmatory experiments. But when we have confirmed the results, then it was, of course, hilarious. It was a fantastic uh, uh, experience to see such a big discovery. This was a sensational find, a great scientific discovery of a previously unknown biological mechanism determining how movement is controlled. The breakthrough was so big that it made headlines in the world's most prestigious scientific publications. Yeah, the 
possibly some 2,000 years ago or, or earlier, some humans discovered that, well, these horses has another gait. We could use these horses in another way. They have this smooth ride, which is very comfortable when you're spending a long time on the horseback. And they liked it. And they used these, they kept these horses and used them for breeding. And they saw a value in that. And then they sold some of these horses to their neighbors, which then sold them to their neighbors. And then it was spreading around the world. So when we, when we do this analysis, we find the mutation at a fairly high frequency in some breeds in Japan in East to the Americas in the West. With the Icelandic horses, Leif showed clearly that the mutated gene enabled the horses to be able to pace. But when he later examined the same mutation in other horse breeds, his sensational discoveries continued. In harness racing, where horses are only supposed to trot, this mutation played a crucial role when victory was near. Trotting horses, it helps the horse to maintain trot at a high speed. Because the normal uh, situation in horses is that they should change to the gallop when increasing the speed. Leif's discovery has had a huge impact on harness racing worldwide. The horses that win here bear with certainty the mutated gene DMRT3, which greatly reduces the risk that a trotting horse will gallop. And today, it's possible to test these racehorses and see that they are carrying this mutated gene. For this is a winning gene for those who are supposed to trot, and for the ones who want to know that they're betting on the right horse. Yeah.